Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our community forum, The Art of Emotional Intelligence and Trust, Cultivating Stronger Connections and Achieving Remarkable Results with our very own Dr. Joe Deklinski. Um, Joe has been a student of change management, innovation, continuous improvement, and the application of individual and workplace emotional intelligence. He spent 35 years working within PA state government, 15 of those years as the director of the Office of Innovation and Customer Service, working with state agencies to create positive change through the implementation of continuous improvement practices. Oh, one of our favorite phrases around here. Joe is a full-time corporate faculty member here at Harrisburg University of Science and Technology, specializing in project risk management, procurement, Agile Lean Transformational Leadership, Emotional Intelligence for Project Managers, and Organizational Leadership. Joe holds a Doctor of Business Administration with a concentration in Organizational Leadership from North Central University, a Master of Public Administration from Shippensburg University of Pennsylvania, and a Bachelor of Science degree in Public Administration from Kutztown University of Pennsylvania. He is also an Emotional Intelligence Coach. All right, at this time, welcome Dr. Joe Deklinski. Why, thank you, Patricia. I, I don't hear any uh, I don't hear any oh. fanfare, but uh, oh. that's okay. We'll work on that the next time. You know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get that laugh track, right? or something. Yeah, that that's here, fine. I'll do some I'll do some online applause here. There you go. Oh, there we go. Thank you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here today, and thank you for uh, working through our you know initial. Uh, few challenges that we had in order to get going. But let me let me get started by saying I'm very happy to be here, very, very excited to talk about uh, emotional intelligence and trust. Emotional intelligence is such an important element, I believe, in our ability to develop relationships and to to, to cultivate a real positive work environment. So let's get started. If we can switch slides. Next slide. So we have a number of activities that we're going to go through today. And ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, I really just want you to think about and understand this whole notion of, of trust and, and, and what it means and how we can use emotional intelligence and trust and build such a stronger workplace. If we can switch to the next slide, please. What's your favorite, think about this, think about this. What's your favorite childhood memory? What's your favorite childhood memory? Think about that. What was the best present that you ever received as a child? Think about those two things for just a moment. One of the important elements of trust is, believe it or not, nostalgia. When we work with teams, and I've, I've worked with hundreds, hundreds of teams, we have to establish a rapport. And we have to establish that rapport. And we can establish it through trust. We can establish it through our use of nostalgia because people love to think about what was and what was in the past. It helps to build that rapport and build that sense of trust. What is your team sometime? Next slide, please. Let me tell you a little story about trust. Picture a young woman, Maya, perched precariously on a ledge, clinging to a crumbling rope bridge in the heart of a forgotten jungle. Below her, a churning river roars, promising a swift and final end to any misstep. Fear claws at her throat, icy fingers of doubt whispering in her ear. She casts her eyes across the chasm, searching for the next precarious grip, but the mist obscures the path ahead. Suddenly, a hand reaches down, strong and calloused, a weathered face creased with concern. 
beckons her forward. It's an old man, a guardian of this ancient passage. His eyes filled with wisdom that transcends her fears. Without a word, Maya accepts his hand, her trembling fingers meeting a steady grasp. He guides her step by step across the bridge, his calm presence a beacon in a storm of uncertainty. As they reach the other side, Maya turns back, tears in her eyes. I couldn't have done it without you, she whispers, her voice thick with gratitude. The old man smiles, a crinkling map on his face. You had the courage to reach out, he says, his voice a low rumble like the river below. Simply reflect, you simply reflected, or I simply reflected your own strength. This, my friends, is the essence of trust and emotional intelligence. It's the unspoken language of hands reaching across chasms, the strength found in vulnerability, the wisdom that sees through fear and guides us to safety. It's about understanding ourselves, our emotions, and the emotions of others. It's about building bridges of trust, one hand held at a time. Today, we'll delve into the intricacies of the vital dance between trust and emotional intelligence. We'll explore how these qualities empower us to navigate the treacherous terrain of relationships, both personal and professional. We'll learn to recognize the ropes that bind us, the bridges we can build, the wisdom we can share with each other through that fog of doubt. Next slide, please. But before we really get into the whole notion of trust, I think it's important to understand what emotional intelligence is. I think we have to lay a little foundation. I like to do that. What are the key facets of emotional intelligence? Self-awareness. This involves knowing your triggers, your values, and your strengths and weaknesses and recognizing how your emotions affect others. How about self-management? This, this, this centers on regulating your emotions and your impulses, setting those clear boundaries. Social awareness. Here, we here our focus is on recognizing and understanding the emotions of others, showing empathy and compassion toward their experiences. And relationship management involves building rapport and how we communicate effectively and actively listen and resolve conflicts constructively. Next slide. I think it's very important for us to understand that emotional intelligence is not some things, it's not certain things. It's not about being nice all the time. It's about being honest. It's not that touchy feely thing that you hear a lot. It's about being aware of your feelings though and those of others. And it's not about being emotional. It's not about flipping out. It's about being smart, smart with your emotions. Next slide, please. Let's talk about trust for a minute. How would you define trust? How would you define trust? A, being able to have a sense of security and confidence when dealing with someone. B, having the ability to predict that someone will act in specific ways and be dependable and see earning a level of cred credibility that has built up over time. Type in the chat pod, what, what do you, what's your answer? A, B, or C? What do you think? A, B, or C? Anybody want to venture a guess, a sense of what it is? A, B, or C? Well, guess what? Guess what? It's all three. It's all three. Right? Let's delve into this just a little more, this whole notion of trust. Next slide, please. 
What is trust? What, what, what is trust? Trust is primarily a positive emotion. It makes people confidently rely on the integrity or ability of people or an organization. The mind triggers the trust emotion after a complex, rational, and empathetic evaluation. The emotion overcomes doubts and fears. In interactions with people, trust appears subconsciously. The mind evaluates our intentions, expectations, and hopes. These evaluations occur in the brain's limbic system where our emotions reside. Within this group of nuclei, many emotions, including distrust and fear, and trust compete. Each emotion offers a behavior option. When will good and rationality prevail in this network? When goodwill and rationality prevail in this network, trust can be selected. But what is trust? How do we define it? Overall, trust is that human need that plays a vital role in our social lives. It allows us to feel safe, secure, and connected to others. Trusting someone believe, it means believing that they will do what they say. Trusting someone means believing that they will be truthful and sincere. Trusting someone believe, means believing they have the skills and abilities to do what's needed. Trusting someone means believing that they have your best interests at heart. I think the philosopher Rousseau summed it up best. Rousseau suggested that trust is a psychological state comprising the intention to accept vulnerability based upon positive expectations of the intentions or behaviors of another. Next slide, please. When we look at trust and we look at understanding our social cues, social cues and understanding other folks' perspectives helps us to deliver and develop that trust. Relationships, how do we talk with folks? How do we communicate? That communication and active listening, building rapport helps build trust. Next slide, please. But the question is, why should we care about trust? Why should we care about trust? That's a question I get a whole lot. It's a question I get a lot. When trust is healthy, when trust is healthy, when it is rooted in relationships and communication, it's a powerful force. But why should we care about trust? A Harvard Business Review study compared people at low trust at a low trust company with and people at a high trust company. The study revealed some very interesting statistics. The people at high trust companies reported 74% less stress, 106% more energy at work, 50% higher productivity, 13% fewer sick days, 76% more engagement, 29% more satisfaction with their lives and 40% less burnout. I think Warren Bennis said it best to summarize the why we should care. He said, trust is the lubrication that makes it possible for organizations to work. Next slide, please. But why should we care about trust in the workplace? 
well, first of all, it enhances communication and transparency. Trusting workplaces have open communication where folks feel comfortable expressing their concerns without fear of judgment. Trust in the workplace increases productivity and engagement. When employees trust their leaders, they are more invested in their work. This translates to higher productivity and increased engagement. Reduces stress and anxiety. A lack of trust can create a tense and stressful work environment. Trusting workplaces experience lower trust levels as folks feel secure knowing they can rely on each other. Improves innovation and creativity. In a trusting environment, employees feel safe to experiment and take risks, leading to greater innovation, creative problem solving. It also strengthens ethical decision making. When employees trust their leaders to act ethically, they're likely to do the same creating a culture of integrity and compliance. Trust is that glue which holds workplaces together. It is the foundation for a positive and productive environment where folks thrive. Next slide, please. Many leaders have th not thought about trust or they don't think it matters, but why should we care about trust as leaders? I believe if you neglect to earn the trust of your folks, you will not be a very effective leader, but why should leaders care? Let's look at a few reasons. First of all, trust flows through power. Trust is the foundation of great leadership that even that, even the respect and trust of others is earned. Developing trust gives you the power to get things done. When folks trust you, they are more willing to follow your leadership. Trust is the opposite of fear. Mistrust leads to disengagement a lack of loyalty. Without trust, team performance suffers. Employees will have trouble making decisions or admitting mistakes for fear of repercussion. When you develop trust, employees are more willing to seek guidance and support without fear. Trust leads to breakthroughs. If you're a trusted leader, Folks will feel empowered to share their ideas, share their opinions, even when they differ from yours, because they're not afraid to speak up. And because of this, you will be privy to different perspectives, new ideas and solutions. Plus, people are more likely to change their behavior when their leader has built trust. Meaning trust plays an important role when trying to implement change and improve performance. Trust helps with damage control. What do we mean? In a fearful environment, employees will wait to admit mistakes, often causing problems, more problems than if they had offered or spoken up sooner. In a trusting environment, employees are not afraid to own up to their mistakes and bring solutions. This not only limits the fallout of an error, but better allows the employee to view the error as a learning opportunity. Next slide, please. When we talk about trust, I think there are two important types of trust that you should understand. These types of trust are developed in different ways, but both are important and work together. It's important that you simultaneously develop both types. And what are those types? Well, first is the practical trust. This is the more traditional type of trust. You earn this trust. 
You earn this trust by being hardworking, showing up on time, meeting deadlines. Without this trust, you might be micromanaged. Communication can break down and productivity decreases. Then there's emotional trust. You create emotional trust by going above and beyond what's expected of you, creating those meaningful bonds. This requires emotional intelligence. If you've ever had or have a best friend at work, there is likely a lot of emotional trust between you. You know you had each other's backs. Building trust in this way is more complex. There is no formula. I can tell you the right way to do it. It's about networking. It's about relationship building. Next slide, please. In an interesting article in the Harvard Business Review, researchers Francis Free and Anna Morris assert that trust has three core drivers, authenticity, logic, and empathy. People tend to trust you when they believe that you are interacting with the real you, authenticity. People trust you when they have faith in your judgment and competence, the logic part. And people tend to trust you when they feel you care about them, the empathy part. Free and Morris note that when trust is lost, it can almost always be traced back to one of these three drivers. Free and Morris go on to say in their work that it isn't just about trusting my leader. It's equally important I show up as someone a leader can trust. Trust is a two-way street. Next slide, please. Trust is that, that precious thread into the fabric of our relationships. It's not static. It's a dynamic dance evolving over time and deepening with shared experience. Understanding how these aspects, time and depth intertwine can shed light on the interactive nature of trust and its significance. Let's look at time. Imagine planting a seed. You nourish it, watch it sprout, and witness its transformation into a plant. Trust is like that seed nurtured by consistent actions and reliable words. Those strengthen the roots of trust, slowly burrowing deep into the set of our emotions. Look at depth. Trust isn't just about superficial interactions. About It's about venturing into the depths of vulnerability. It's about sharing our true selves, our hopes, and our fears with the confidence that we will be met with understanding and acceptance. Next slide, please. David Horsager is the author of The Trust Edge, and I commend that book to you. If you have an opportunity, see if you can pick that up. It's a few bucks on Amazon. In his book, Horsager discusses the barriers to gaining trust, especially in today's world. And he talks about rising litigation. He, he talks about the increasing prevalence of lawsuits and legal threats, which can erode trust as people fear being taken advantage of. He talks about technology. Well, technology can facilitate communication and connection. It can also create a sense of detachment and anonymity that hinders trust building. He talks about speedy social networks, the rapid pace and superficiality of information shared on social media can make it difficult to establish meaningful relationships and build trust. He talks about fear, whether it's fear of the unknown, fear of betrayal, or fear of failure, it can prevent individuals from opening up and trusting others. Next slide, please. He talks about negative experiences, past experiences with betrayal or dishonesty 
can make it hard to trust others in the future. Those negative experiences can leave emotional scars that make it difficult to feel safe and vulnerable enough to trust again. Then there's individualism. Cultures that emphasize individualism can make it more challenging to build trust. This is because individuals are focused on their own needs and their own goals than on the well-being of the group, which can lead to suspicion and competition. And then there's diverse thinking. While diversity of thought can enrich relationships and innovation, it can also present challenges to building trust. People with different perspectives may have difficulty understanding and empathizing with each other, leading to misunderstanding and conflict. And then there's instant gratification, right? The desire for immediate results and gratification can make people impatient and unwilling to invest the time and the effort needed to build genuine trust. This can le lead to a focus on short-term benefits over long-term relationships. Next slide, please. I have some questions to ponder. What barriers do you come up against most often in terms of building trust? Think about how might you overcome these barriers? Think about that. We run into barriers all the time, subconsciously or consciously in building trust. Think for a moment how that can be, how that can be overcome. Next slide, please. But you know, there are some advantages that I would just like to review, and there are some disadvantages to building trust that I think we have to keep in mind. Trust has a lot of advantages, but building trust in the workplace has some downsides too. Our advantages for building trust, it builds communication. Effective communication is vital. Next slide, please. Effective communication is vital, vital to any workplace. I think we'll all agree. But good communication builds po a positive culture in which folks feel heard and satisfied. It should not be surprising that trust is an essential building block for an organization having effective communication, two-way communication where parties feel heard. It boosts productivity. Motivation is a powerful tool that can be harnessed by trust. When people feel that their leaders trust them to accomplish a task, they're more likely to rise to the challenge so that they don't let their leader or themselves down. It improves employee satisfaction. Recall the HBR study about high and low trust environments. At the end of the day, employees want to feel their organization has their best interests in mind and vice versa. But there are some disadvantages. Well, it's hard to think about the disadvantages to trust. There are a few. First, being taken for granted. An example of this is the open door policy. While this Popular approach works well for some organizations. You have to keep in mind it is not a one-size-fits-all. This could be for many reasons. Employees may feel afraid to make decisions without talking to their leader, and there may be a decline in productivity for leaders who constantly have visitors at their door. An open-door policy can also cause an organization's hierarchy to get confusing. This can happen when a leader starts to appear more like a friend. Once that line has been crossed, some folks might take advantage of this leniency. It has to be maintained. Once a leader has the trust of their team, the goal is not to break it. This can be tough when the leader is focused 
and faced with difficult decisions. To maintain trust, leaders must be as transparent as possible regarding these decisions. And finally, trust as a disadvantage can be competitive. Leaders must be aware that they may unconsciously trust some folks with more responsibility than others. This leads to some folks feeling unworthy or underappreciated. When there's a climate of mistrust, employees may just perform to the bare minimum that's needed. And then organizations fail to thrive unless this problem is corrected. Next slide, please. So how can we create trust? Some of what I'm about to say may seem intuitive, may, but it's, but it's worth repeating. You know, it may seem, I, you may think, I do this. Do you? Do you do it consistently? Say what you mean, mean what you say. Your word is important. So it's important to watch and match actions with words. I'll be there to help you move on Saturday. Well, make sure you're there on Saturday. You can do more damage when you make promises you can't keep. This is not to say that you can't change your mind, but you need to communicate it. Hey, here's what happened. Saying what you mean and meaning what you say creates trust in your words. Communicate your intentions clearly. Effective and clear communication is so important in establishing trust. Folks are generally not mind readers. Communicate what you're thinking. Don't make folks guess. This does not build trust. Admit your mistakes. Reliability and accountability creates trust. Building trust in any relationship is taking accountability for your mistakes. It's okay. It's okay to do that. Tell the truth. This may seem like a no-brainer. You learn this from childhood. But you would be surprised how many good-hearted people lie. Good people lie to avoid conflict to get out of situations, or to please the person in front of them. When you're dishonest, and when you're dishonest about small things, you know those little white lies, it makes it harder for people to trust you when it comes to bigger issues. Always telling the truth is the first step in developing a trusting relationship. Next slide, please. Listen first. To build trust, you must respect how others think and feel. That's why it's important to listen first. Active listening involves asking questions along with a concentrated effort to understand the answers. Doing this sends the message. What's important to them is important to you. This builds trust. Showing empathy. Beyond listening, Try your best to understand other folks' perspective. This is cognitive empathy. You will always benefit by showing effective and emotional empathy. This means attempting to share the feelings of others. Empathy builds trust. Be authentic. Authent authenticity creates trust. We're all drawn to those people who keep it real who realize they're not perfect, but are willing to show these imperfections. This doesn't mean sharing everything about yourself. It does mean saying what you mean. It does mean saying what you mean. Do we do that? Sometimes, right? Sometimes we do, right? Be helpful. One of the greatest ways to gain someone's trust is to help. Think about your favorite boss. Was he or she willing to take the time out of their busy schedule to listen, 
to get down in the trenches and work alongside you. Trust is about the long game. Help wherever and whenever you can. Next slide, please. Disagree and commit. Jeff Bezos once explained to disagree and commit doesn't mean thinking your team is wrong and missing the point, which will prevent you from offering their true support to them. Rather, he says it's a genuine, sincere commitment to go the team's way, even if you disagree. Of course, you should be able to explain your position and the team should reasonably weigh your concerns. But if you decide to disagree and commit, you have to be all in. Trust your team. Give them room to experiment and to grow. Trust follows. Be humble. This doesn't mean you don't stand up for your opinions. Rather, it means you realize that you don't know everything and you're willing to learn. The two most difficult words in the English language also build trust. What are those words? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Be transparent. There is nothing worse for your team than keeping secrets. This doesn't build trust. Make your vision, your intentions, your methods clear. Commend sincerely and specifically. When you commend and praise others, you satisfy a basic human need. As folks notice you appreciate their efforts, they're more motivated to do more and trust builds. But please remember this. The more specific, the better. Tell them what you appreciate, and why. Next slide, please. Ladies and gentlemen, let's climb out of the chasm of mistrust and build a world where vulnerability becomes strength and emotional intelligence becomes the compass that leads us to a brighter future. Next slide, I'd like to conclude with this thought. Okay, this thought from Dr. Sam Shriver, he's executive vice president, the Center for Leadership Studies. And they've looked at trust in different ways. And he says, trust is an investment that you make every day. Think about that. Think about what you can do to build trust in your own small way, in your own world. Trust is an investment. You do it every day. Next slide, please. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attentiveness. Thank you so much for listening to me. I truly hope I didn't bore the living daylights out of you for the last 45 minutes. And I hopeful, uh, I'm hopeful that you, you picked up a few tips along the way. And I, I sincerely appreciate it. And thank you so much. I, I appreciate all the, I appreciate all the, uh, the well wishes. That is fantastic. It does my heart good. I'd be happy to take some questions if we have any um, from, you know, from the audience. Uh, Do not. You can put questions in the Q&A. I do have one. You will have access to the recordings. You'll get a link. You will also get a survey on today. So we'll be sending that out. We'll talk about that at the end of the session. Um, you know, so speaking I, of questions. Oh, go ahead. Oh, we do have one. What if you okay. can't control others' level of trust? Um, I'm going to see if I can show this up on the stage. Um, does trusting still help? Yes, it does. I think it's a great question. And thank you for that. Yes, it does. Because as you continue to trust, if you give up, so is everyone else. Okay, And I would argue that the more you continue to try and trust, the more someone is going to get it. 
Okay. Trust is not an overnight thing. You know, it's, it's a continual process and we have to be willing to be in it for the long haul. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that, that right. thought. Um, and, and thank you for yeah. your comment about, it was a great presentation. I didn't think it was too bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It was a great pre you you're a great storyteller. I'm like, I think you should record bedtime stories. Um, so we have another question here. Um, okay, how can you build trust when you end up being the messenger for bad news or changes coming from the higher up? That's a great question. That's from Cynthia Th Thomas. That that is that is a great question. And, and I have been in that position innumerable times in 35 years and you know in state government and I, I, you, just being honest just being transparent um letting people know that this is the situation i you know people I, i've seen a lot of leaders and in my consulting work you know i've i've, I've worked with a lot of leaders who try and do this kind of like sugar coating thing and 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 don't okay be upfront be transparent explain what's going on okay give them as much information about the, the decision as possible yeah. and quite frankly you know if you have been working on building your trust over time when it comes to that it's not going to be as bad as you think because the person on the receiving end is going to recognize that you 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 have their back. I think there's another question. How do you manage conflictive individuals? You're very welcome. How do you manage conflicting conflictive individuals? Ignore them. No, <laughs> no, no, we're not, we're not going to do that. You know, I, I, I think, you know, again, I think that if you have built that trust and you have that con conflict, the message will be delivered in a way that's understood. If you demonstrate some empathy it will be delivered in a way that will be accepted. I, I think in dealing with conf conflict, the more authentic you are, the more honest you are, the more willing you are to listen to what they have to say. And, 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 and frankly, the most important part of that is, is really as, as emotion, as, as folks with high emotional intelligence, we need to actively listen. Let them get whatever they need out. We we want to jump in with a solution or give our own perspective. With a with a, with, a, with dealing with conflict, believe me, you have to sit back and you have to listen. You have to let folks feel they're being heard. Okay. Hopefully that was of some help. Thank you for your question. All right. How do you manage trust of the leader, but not of the organization or higher leadership? Oh, that was a good one. How do, you manage, yeah. how do you manage trust as a leader when you don't have trust? Uh, so, yeah, of, of the leader. Of? I trust my boss, but I don't trust the company I'm working for. How do you manage that? <laughs> you trust your leader. OK, you know, you trust your leader because if your leader is exhibiting that trust, you know what that leader is going to tell you is honest and truthful. They you're going to know that they say what they mean. It's unfortunate, and, and I've seen this in, in different organizations that, you know, that level of trust isn't built and I'd love to do, you know, a trust workshop, <laughs> you know, that can happen, Joe, that can happen. <laughs> yeah. You know, because there's, there's so many things 
There's so many things, so many things we can do, but you can't let that inhibit you. You can't let that trust or mistrust from way up, okay, affect what you do, okay? You have to, I believe, you know, be trusting in your coworkers and be trusting and, and exhibit that trust so others can see it in you. Accept that trust from your leader and do what you can to control what you can control. Sometimes we live in a trust bubble. Yeah. Okay. Any other, I don't see any other questions. Any parting um, thoughts you want to share with everybody, Joe? We're almost to the end of our time here. Okay. Yeah, sure. Sure. First of all, again, I do want to thank you for all of your attentiveness and, and for all the kind um, words that you've offered uh, for, for the presentation. Remember, trust comes from within. And, and if you begin the trust train, if you, if you are that engine, it will follow, but you know, it takes you, okay. It, it takes someone to get it going. Can that be you? I hope so. Thanks again. All right. Yay. Let's do some applause here. Yay. 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 <clears throat> you know. All right. Thank you. And we hope to see you at our next community forum or some of our upcoming events. I'm just going to. Okay. Oh, Jametta, can you stop sh sharing? Thank you, Dr. Clark. <laughs> I have a video. Sorry. <laughs> so we, oh, there we go. There we are. All right. Okay. Yeah. So we have some of our upcoming um, events at the university, as well as some of our upcoming programs for our center for project management innovation. Um, we hope that we will get a chance to see some of you in attendance today at those as well. There will be a follow-up survey in your email. We always like to hear from you and we are continuous. We are a continuous process improvement um, group here. So we always like to get your feedback so we can continue to make these better. Thank you again, Dr. Deklinski. And you are we are glad to see you're doing better. <laughs> yep. Living the dream. Living the dream. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.